Stop be looking at the camera you. You can look at me. Welcome to the Village Jump. I'm your host, Coach Tina Lane. And April is Autism Awareness Month. And in the studio today, we have a great guest that I am honored to have, Mrs. Nadine Wright Abubakar. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It is a pleasure to have you. So we go back a few years when you came on the show before and we talked about your organization and everything that you do. But before we start talking about your organization, just tell me a little about who Nadine is. Wow. Well, my name is Nadine Wright Arbubaka. I am the mother of four amazing children. One happens to be on the autism spectrum. I'm also the president and founder of Nissan's Place, which is a 501c3 nonprofit organization helping to enrich and make a difference in the lives of children and families affected by autism in and around underserved inner city communities. And Nissan's Place is inspired by my own son on the autism spectrum, whose name is Nissan. Yes. So when you're not doing all of those things with Nissan's Place, what do you like to do for extracurricular activity? What do you like to do you to do as far as a spa day or what other activities? Just want to learn a little bit more about you and let the audience know who you are. Wow. It's interesting you say that because people say I never take time for myself, which is kind of true. Yeah. I mean, I am living in my purpose of life mm -hmm. and that is to help others um, through my organization. Um, so I rarely take enough time for myself. Um, but I do like to do all those things. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I do need to learn how to better balance that. Okay. But I get my biggest joy out of, of living my purpose and helping the children and families that we serve through Nassan's Place and seeing those parents or those caregivers get some much needed time because it's important. I, I, I tell people all the time that it's important for the caregiver to take care of themselves so that they can be ready enough to take care of our children. I need to take my own advice. Sometimes I don't do that. But I, I, I think it's important, you know, when you're raising a special needs child, period, especially a child on the autism spectrum where the challenges can be um, very challenging, right. the behaviors can be very challenging, it's overwhelming. And sometimes we need that mental mental stability, whether we can get a pamper me day, which is something that Nathan's Place offer our parents over the last few years, or just a much needed me or de-stress time, it's important. Mm -hmm. I got to do better with that for myself, though. <laughs> well, listen, you talked about it on television now, so everyone's going to know we're going to hold you to it. <laughs> I'm just joking. But so basically, your organization started 12 years ago? We actually just started. We, we're actually going into our 11th year. Oh, 11 years. Yeah, 11 years. Right, 11 we years. started in 2012. And it's interesting because I was in my living room this morning with some people who were working with us. And I was like, this is where it all started, right in the middle, right in my living room. You know, we did a fundraiser um, to raise the seed money so that we can get our 501c3 and start the, 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 sto the journey of helping other families. So, yeah, we started in 2012, and it was because I couldn't find programs for my own son. I couldn't find respite, which is what I desperately needed at that time. Um, I couldn't find a support group, which is something I needed because, unfortunately, I was in un uncharted territory and dealing with autism. I didn't know what it was. I just knew that my son was having some behaviors that I was not familiar with and it was overwhelming from the flapping of the hands to the running back and forth to the um, hitting out of nowhere. It, it was just a lot. It was overwhelming and he was my last child and my only son. So it was it was a lot. So when did you first notice that him doing those type of things like the hitting and the running and making the sound what is that age two age three because i know everyone is different when it first starts i noticed i'll never forget the day that i noticed it he was about 18 months and i remember calling out his name nasan nasan and he didn't respond which was strange because he was responding to his name and i go up to him i say nasan nasan nothing and then the TV happened to be on. An Elmo commercial came on. He loved Elmo okay. from Sesame Place. And he took off running. So I was like, well, he heard that. Why isn't he all of a sudden not listening to his name? So I call him again, right? And he's not. He didn't, he didn't look or anything. So I, I did a test. I was like, oh, my God, maybe there's something wrong with his hearing. And I laid him on the bed. I remember DVRing 
using my DVR to record the Elmo commercial. Okay. I recorded the Elmo commercial, um, laid him on the bed, called out his name, nothing. Turned on the commercial, he heard Elmo and he jumped up. And I was like, oh my God, what is this? So that was my first inkling that something was off. He stopped responding to his name. And then I noticed the behaviors. He started flapping, like, and then running back and forth and once, just up and down. I've been like, what is this? So I started to Google it and it said autism. And I was like, nah, it can't be autism. You never heard of that in the African American community. Right. Um, so I was like, no, nah, it's not that. But I couldn't ignore the signs. So, you know, I asked the pediatrician, something's different with Nason. You know, prior to him, I had three daughters. So this was my first son. The doctor, my pediatrician at that time said to me, well, boys are different than girls. They develop differently, which is possibly true. But I knew something was off. It wasn't until prior to him going into daycare, he was being um, babysat in someone's home care. Child care was provided in someone's home. And I even asked her, do you, something seems different. Oh, no, he seems okay. It wasn't until I put him into a daycare setting, the very first day the woman said to me, the teacher, she was very hesitant. She said, uh, you know, he kept to himself, which he did. Um, maybe you should consider having him evaluated. And I looked at her. You think so? Do you see it too? Because I felt like right. I'm the only one that's seeing it because everyone else is telling me, oh, no, you're right. overreact. No, it was something there. And she... She validated that for me. And then the journey started to go to the developmental pediatricians to get the evaluations. And at 26 months, we got the official diagnosis of PPD, persuasive, PDD, persuasive developmental delay, not otherwise specified. Because he was 26 months old, they would not back then diagnose him with autism because they said the window of development for him would be up until the age of five. Okay. So he technically didn't get the autism diagnosis until he was five, but he got the PDD not otherwise specified at 26 months. And then the journey began. Okay. For those who may not know, what is autism? Wow. Autism is something that's a life changer. Yes. <laughs> it definitely is a life changer. It doesn't mean you stop living. It just means you live differently. Yes. But it is a neurological disorder that it can affect a child's cognitive, social, sensory, and fine motor skills. And um, for me, um, Nissan has been impacted with his social skills, with his cognitive understanding. Um, sensory has definitely gotten a lot better. Um, he is nonverbal. He will never be able to be on his own at this point. He probably has the mental capacity of a three or four year old and cognitively, even though he's a six foot six, 350 pound man child. He has come a long way. I, I count my blessings on yes. the village that I was able to create and all families need to have when you're dealing with a child on the autism spectrum. Well, I've seen pictures of him before and like you, like you said, six foot six and 350, degree, um, 50, 350 pounds. And so when you see someone like Nason and you're, uh, he's out in the public eye, are you nervous that people don't recognize that right away and they're looking at wondering why he's acting in a certain way? Because even though autism has been around, we're talking about it more, especially your organization is bringing in more attention to it. I found people are still ignorant of it. And it, it amazes me because we are talking about it more and more. Yeah, you know, I was also ignorant of autism yeah. until it impacted me. And I think for me, I remember, you know, going to the stores or to the malls and Nissan would have what I call involuntary meltdowns. Um, he would fall out and kick and scream. And I, you know, me growing up when a kid did that, you know, my mom old school, you know, that kid needs a good old fashioned, you know what? Right. And that's not the case with our children. Right. These children on the autism spectrum can't control those behaviors right. that they go through. And that's why I call them involuntary meltdowns. And what I had to do, because I used to get angry when people would stare at my son and probably say words, I had to understand that they were ignorant just like I was prior to understanding okay. what it was. But it was important for me to also start to educate others. Because what I said to myself is that I can't expect anyone to understand this if they are not educated on it. I love it, um, yes. And ignorance yes. is just not knowing. And, and that's what I 
started doing, you know, even before I started Nissan's Place, I wanted to educate others. I didn't want people to look at my son with this stare and thinking that he was other than someone else that's dealing with a diagnosis of autism. You know, years ago, we all had kids in um, our classrooms who had special education and they were those kids. No one ever really talked about autism, especially in the black and brown community. Yes. But our children shouldn't be hidden. They need to be out in the forefront. So that's why it was important for me to share, to talk about it. And as you talked about more in the community, you know, to see the various municipalities in Essex County open up their doors and start offering programs and services like the city of East Orange, the city of Newark. I mean, I my hat is off to them, you know, to Mayor Ted Green from East Orange, to Newark Mayor Raj J. Baraka, the, the municipal councils, for them to recognize that these children do exist in our community, that they do need to have opportunities um, that's for them, yes. and they need to stay in their own communities and to actually provide it. It's amazing, and I, and I count my blessings. I One of my, my dreams, and I have so many about the work that we do, is that other municipalities will follow these leaders in what they do. I mean, to have the Lieutenant Governor of the state of New Jersey to actually sit down with me and talk about autism and how she wants to be um, more involved to help and was happy about the work that, that, that I do. You know, to hear Assembly, Assemblywoman Timberlake um, talk about the work we do, and she was there when I very first started out. Mm. And you know, it's, it's, it's humbling. It really is humbling to know that the um, leaders in our communities recognize, recognize the need for more to be spoken about for these families, but to also provide the resources and services and giving it to us. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful that everyone's coming together to assist you, knowing that Nassan's Place been together 11 years. Having a good friend of mine actually utilize your services and different things that you have done down to the movie theater where sensory friendly. I love it. Or teaching children how to swim, or we were talking about this earlier, the respite program. So tell us some of the services that you offer and how the reaction has been from the children and the parent. Oh, wow. Well, what I looked at when I started Nason's Place is what do I want for my son? Okay. I want my son to have the same type of opportunities as any other children. Unfortunately, we didn't have that because no one was talking about autism and no one know, knew how to deal with our children and some of the challenges, the behaviors that they may have. Um, so it was important to get a sensory friendly uh, movie day. I remember um, watching something or seeing something on the internet that AMC was offering it in West Orange or other areas that wasn't in Essex County, urban right. inner city. I was born and raised in the city of Newark and I live in East Orange. Why can't we have something like that here? So I remember the day I reached out to um, CityPlex 12, Frank Gonzalez, amazing, amazing. He just won a superhero award for the work that he does for us in the autism community. Oh, wow, um, excellent. So kudos and congratulations yes. to Frank Gonzalez of CityPlex 12. Um, and that was um, nine years ago. We're still there. Every month we get a theater of our very own and we go in and if our children want to laugh, scream, shout, whatever they want, they can because it's a theater full of parents and caregivers and friends and families. Um, and it's also an opportunity for our parents to connect with others. So it's right. important to have those sensory friendly movie days. And what I love about CityPlex 12 is that they made it affordable. Because to me, that's a key in our community when you're living in urban inner city. And 80 to 85 percent of the households we serve are single parent households. So to make that movie day affordable for seven to ten dollars, you're paying for popcorn, drink, fruit snack, and the price of a movie. You can't get it anywhere else. So sensory friendly movie days we offer. Sensory friendly skate days. We'll go to Branchbrook Roller Skating Ring. And I was just telling this to um, Congressman Donald Payne Jr., who came to our very first sensory friendly skate day. Yeah, it had to be almost nine years ago as well. Um, and to have him in the room the other night when we did our Night of Elegance charity fundraiser, and we'll talk a little bit more yes. about the amazing things that he's done for us, but to have him be there and actually witness seeing our families, that was, that was surreal for me, and then coming back almost 10 years later and him still seeing us do the work. But at the school programs, um, summer camps, let me tell you, summer camps are the number one least amount of resources in our community. City of East Orange was the first municipality that I know about in Essex County to 